I'm connected to the truth so everything is gone real smooth Ooh, I don't know about you but for me everything It ain't exclusive if it ain't an Emlyn exclusive It's your boy BQ We right here in the heart of Silicon Valley Right here in downtown San Jose uh, Right out Sofa District And you guys know where we're at we're Right here at the Emlyn Labs And uh, man, we're just gonna keep them coming We're not gonna stop delivering you all the value Giving you guys some insight And most importantly, just sharing some game um, and I really enjoy doing this. I love, uh, you know, having these opportunities to connect with these individuals all throughout the Bay Area. Uh, people sometimes come outside from the section. Um, but most importantly, I want to provide a platform for people to not only share their stories, but to give insight to people that are in the same industry or are inspired to become a part of the industry. Um, so, yeah, as mentioned, we have a very special guest today. Um, I want to go ahead and introduce my guest, the one and only C. Lee, C. Legal for the people. Thank you for joining us today, man. Appreciate man, you. Man, blessed and highly favored. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing great, man. It's a Saturday, so, you know, I know we've been having uh, back and forth trying to make this happen, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah I caught it last time because it was storming, hey, my bad. It, you I know don't what blame I'm saying? you, man. This it, weather's it been... real life storming, so I couldn't, I said, I can't drive an hour and some change in this storm. <laughs> yeah, that'd be too rough. But, you know, it was it was a smooth drive this time, so... I'm looking to, you know, have a good conversation like we had a while back. Yeah. No, it's been, we were just talking about our camera. It's been since 2019. This is right before the pandemic, pre-COVID, pre-COVID. So a lot of time, a lot of time has gone by and uh, a lot of growth. You know, I've been, I've been following you from afar, uh, keeping up with your journey. And obviously I, I stay, um, you know, inspired by the stuff you put out and obviously the, the value you give to the people, um, not just in the hip hop community, but just shit that's going on in the world. Like you really be giving your opinion and, and and knowledgeable on on the subjects. And I just feel like we need to hear a different voice from the community when it comes to these matters. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you for coming to San Jose, man. Like you said, hours and change. We appreciate you for coming to the tank. Absolutely. I got a love for San Jose. I got a lot of love for San Jose. San Jose has its own individual culture and everybody from San Jose takes a lot of pride in being from San Jose, and I just love that, you know what I'm saying? So however I can be of, of service to San Jose, I'm going to keep doing it. I, I got love for San Jose. Beautiful, man. So we're going to get right into it. As you know, as you've seen earlier, and I saw you post on the gram, we appreciate you highlighting what we do. Um, got some questions uh, that I wrote down. I definitely want to go down the list and kind of, um, and, and for the ones that are just tuning in that aren't familiar with the podcast, um, this is an entrepreneurship-based podcast, also kind of highlighting individuals in the uh, entertainment industry and given your perspective um, and a little bit of your background as well. Um, but before we dive in, because like I said, I got a list, um, I want to give you an opportunity to formally introduce yourself to the people that might not, for the select few that don't know who you are, definitely want to give you a chance to you know, formally introduce yourself if you don't mind. Well, you know, it's your boy BQ, you know, holding down the tank. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Man, I'm C Legal for the people, man. Uh, you know, but I'm C Lee, man, a philanthropist, host. Uh, some people like to use the word influencer. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but, you know, it comes with the territory. Um, I'm just me, man. And uh, just being me has afforded me a lot of opportunity, a lot of success and, you know, a lot of work. So I'm just I, I literally just like to pride myself on being me. That's the message I would, you know, overall, that's you're going a recurring theme you're going to hear throughout this interview is just being myself. Because to anybody watching this, I want you to just unapologetically be yourself. And uh, that could take you to place you would never imagine. No, that's beautiful. Beautiful and well said. Um, I think like in today's time with social media, like it's been what I remember Snapchat coming out like in high school. This is like 20, 2010 time frame. Like and now we're 2023, 20, 13 years later and seeing how or twenty twenty four, twenty twenty four. Yeah, tw yeah, you're right. Twenty twenty four, my mistake. But it's like fourteen years. This whole time period of like social media evolving, and it's kind of gotten a little weird. You know what I mean? Like what I mean by that is like. You know, people are changing their behaviors in a way where it's like you're just trying to chase clout and you're not really doing something that's like making a lot of sense besides trying to get followers. Um, and what I mean by what, what I'm getting at is like this is where authenticity and being original actually pays out, pays mm -hmm. off. Um, so that's why I really value, like I said, uh, originality, authenticity, because I think that's really the key um, when it comes to creating content in the space in today's world. Um, but as we dive in, I definitely want to uh, kind of learn a little bit about how you've been able to manage to maintain your originality um, and still being you um, in a time period where you like you, you know, you started doing your content for yourself. You did your own platform. You did your own talk show. And then, you know, you started working with different people like mm -hmm. Fizzler and different entities uh, that now have, you know, you've elevated even further in mm -hmm. your craft. Um, and when, when it comes with that, you got... 
you know, people in your ear like, Seely, you doing amazing shit, man. Like, you doing stuff for the people. Um, and you also got tons of people consuming your content on IG Live and on the shows and on the bar wars. Like, how do you maintain uh, your side of, like, staying true to yourself and not getting caught up with all the glitz and the glamour and the smoke and the mirrors and all the above? Uh, well, I mean, discipline. I think discipline for any man is important, meaning you got to stay disciplined, staying focused on the mission and not the the fluff. Fluff is the praise, the money, you know, the parties and all that. You got to stay focused on, okay, this needs to be done. This needs to be done. This needs to be done. And when you focused on the work, next thing you know, you accomplished a lot and with more to accomplish, essentially just being focused on the work. Um, and I think that's important for all young men to know is it's important to uh, just stay focused on the work because the work is what got you there. The work is going to keep you there. The work is going to take you further. So the work, meaning uh, in, in, in the industry, the work would be making sure you're creating your content, making sure you're here doing interviews, making sure you are uh, having your meetings and planning and prepping with your team, whoever that team may be, whether it's just you and your girl or you and your actual team. Uh, you know, so preparation, um, execution and, you know, discipline is what's going to keep you kind of sane. Once you let one of those go and you slip, you're going to see how quickly uh, everything can, uh, you can lose a grip of everything and all that clout and money and opportunity you had can easily very slip. And that come with study. And that's why I always credit uh, every interview I, I bring up Remedy, you know what I'm saying? Who's a producer, artist, you know, he was a videographer at one point, Remedy, who's in a wheelchair, you know, is, is one of the greatest teachers in Northern California because he's done everything. And learning from him taught me like, you can lose this quickly. Therefore, you want to stay disciplined. You know what I'm saying? That That is the most essential thing in this game is being dis in any game is just being disciplined. So that's how I, that's how I keep grips. When you focused on the work, you don't really have time to be arrogant and egotistical or, you know, just all partying or, you know, creating kids you can't take care of. <laughs> you don't have time <laughs> for that just that, because yeah. you have so much to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's just work. It's just you got to stay focused on the work. No, uh, that's beautifully said. Um, and that's really dope. And honestly, I, I really appreciate even just starting with that word because I feel like that is something that people forget about. Like, you know, the work and obviously coming to work every day, clocking, that's what you're supposed to do. But as far as maintaining it, um, it does require discipline. Now, let me ask you, like, have you always been disciplined or was there a certain defining moment where you're like, shit, I need to switch some shit up and really make sure I take it to this level? Well, I've always had to be disciplined because I've noticed most people who are independent at a very young age, like who moved out their parents' house very early or who simply just had a lot of responsibilities early, you almost had to be disciplined with this, to a certain degree because everything was relying upon you. So I, I, I've been living on my own since I was like 18, since I was, you know, like I literally like four months after high school, I was out of my mom's house living in my, I was living with my sister, but I was on my own, not yeah. under my mom's roof. And it's like, you have to be disciplined when you have responsibilities early, when you have rent, when you have PG&E, when you have food, you have gas, your check engine light might come on. You know, you say you got to still get the clothes on your back. When you got a lot of responsibilities early, you have to be disciplined. Now, what this music industry, what the music industry has done for me is another level of discipline, meaning you got to really bite down and be yeah. even more disciplined because there's not much room for error because the any error is going to can cost you your career mm -hmm. and you don't want to be making those kind of mistakes especially consistent mistakes even though we all going to make them but you don't want to be making big mistakes to the point where you throw your whole career away and we've seen that time and time again with several extremely talented young men and women undisciplined uh unfocused, you know, very lackadaisical, lazy type energy, destroy them. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, again, once you study the landscape, that's why I credit Remedy, because before I got in it, I was I was an understudy, understudy of his. Mm -hmm. I learned, okay, you're going to have to be disciplined if this is going to, if you want this to work. No, that's definitely um, important. And and that's that, that gives a little context of, like, where that discipline comes from, because you paying your rent still in the Bay Area right now. It's man, it's that's insane. serious. So you need to make sure you producing and paying them, paying them bills. I think every young man, especially I, I specifically to the men, every young man needs to experience two different things in his life: one, living on his own, paying all his own bills, and two, entrepreneurship. Those two things right there will mature you at a rate that you would never even think. Because when every single thing is dependent upon you. It, it takes creativity, it takes discipline, it takes problem solving, it takes good communication, it takes building healthy relationships, and it takes focus. Mm -hmm. 
it takes a different level of focus. And, and when everything is relying upon you, when you paying all your own bills, everything is relying upon you. When you are the boss of a company, you are now responsible to fix all the problems. Meaning when the employee or somebody you contracted to do something, when they have a problem, it's on you to fix it. You can't complain like everybody else now. You have to be the problem solver. And that right there, it brings something out of you. It, it, it can make a man of you. You know what I'm saying? Now, women too, but specifically for the men, every man needs to experience living independently on their own and entrepreneurship. That's just my thoughts. No, those are, uh, that's, man, you hit it on the ball, man, because I think um, there's a lot of people living under their parents' roof and, you know, they're- Which is cool, not, which wrong is fine, which is perfectly it. fine. You there's nothing to, wrong with you that. You have to utilize it if you're in, in a jam or, you know, you're in, it's all circumstantial, but I do agree with you that once you are in a position where you got to pay the rent because, hey, guess what? If you don't pay it, they're going to kick your ass out. Exactly. Like, there ain't no bypass. You know? There is no excuses. There is no cry me a river. There is no, you know what I'm saying, uh, finger pointing- it has to be paid. There is no excuses. And a, a man needs to experience that because that's life. Mm -hmm. As a man, nobody's not going to necessarily care about your feelings, your emotions, or what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Some will, but the reality of after all of that, after you get done crying or going through what you're going through, mm -hmm. bills have to be paid. Responsibilities have to be handled. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important for every, especially a young man, to realize that because the world is not... Uh, empathetic to what you're going through. The world can be cruel, and if if you let it, the world can can beat you up. That's why it's important to have that you know mental and emotional and physical and spiritual strength early, so you can be able to handle what comes with just living in this world. No, that's the reality, you know. And I think that comes with ownership, um, taking accountability, like oh, yeah, actually definitely. like owning that. Because I think when it comes to like we having a good moment in time, right? We got some. We got some money coming in, you know, we going out to eat, we the bills pay. We own that moment, right? Mm -hmm. Some shit is the opposite, shit is the fan. People are quick to point fingers. And I, I, I've experienced that, you know, because I was young at a point in time and I had those thoughts. But then as, you know, you start to uh, work with different individuals, you start to build up company, you start to be the one paying all the invoices. You start to realize, like, I can't afford this to fuck up. Exactly. Um, and, and with that being said, you have to kind of own up to all the bad shit that's going on as well. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's really key. So I thank you for sharing that. Um, and as far as being in the entertainment industry, like you kind of you said it earlier, like you have to kind of be on another level of discipline. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, so I feel like from what I'm taking away already, just going to come minutes into the podcast, you're a wise person. Like you're you and what I mean by that is because you learned at an early age that responsibility had to, absolutely had to be a key component. So. Do you catch yourself being a mentor to people in this space that are trying to get in the in Because I, I feel like you work with a bunch of artists uh, in, in the lane you're in. Do you catch yourself kind of like being that guidance for some people? Well, I'm going to be honest. Right now in yeah. the entertainment industry, it's a very egotistical thing. So everybody thinks yeah. they know everything. Yeah. So I try to, you know, I only give my information when asked. If not, I'm with Remedy or somebody I'm close to studying game tapes, essentially yeah. figuring out what we can make better. Mm -hmm. But I don't really too much try to mentor nobody in the yeah. entertainment industry because Essentially, a lot of people, what they give is they curse, meaning a lot of creative, talented people, whether it's a comedian, a rapper, no matter what it is, they're, they can be very emotional and that helps them create great art. Mm -hmm. But when they take that same emotion and egotistical attitude into business, into mm -hmm. building structure, it yeah. could be detrimental. So I don't necessarily, I don't really have too many people I'm mentoring, but if they ask me, absolutely, I'm willing to give all any information that I have that's worked for me, but this is a very egotistical game, very yeah. arrogant. It's a very arrogant game where not many people are even looking for your information because they have all the answers. Yeah. So that's just my thought. No, that's, man, it's crazy because I, I feel like it is one of the only industries that is like that, you know, as far as egotistical, like people are willing to not associate in, in politics, right? Like, I'm not going to do a song with this person. I'm not going to associate this uh this a business situation with this individual because of what they're associated with. But at the end of the day, you know, if you look at the world of politics, there's people that literally do business and sign bills and, and, and move things forward in the greater good of like helping the people. Um, and, and I've caught myself in certain situations where I had to swallow my pride um, to, and like, there's a fine line when it comes to selling your soul and actually doing business. That's actually mm -hmm. going to equate to a, a beneficial situation. Absolutely. And I feel like this is something that I feel like is worth talking about because um, you know, I do events in San Jose and, you know, it's a, it's a small industry cause there's only a handful of people really doing it on this scale. But I do catch myself that certain people don't work with certain people 
And like I catch myself being uh, in in conversation with both these individuals, I don't even involve myself into their their beefs. But I look at the fact that like, hey, if I can be that mediator to kind of get y'all to work together, look at how many people can can benefit from this project. In the sense, I'm referring to like doing a, a an event that's gonna pay. Um, 20 to 30 plus people uh, for a, a freelance job and give entertainment people an opportunity to perform. Like that's where maturity comes in and like you're actually able to uh, to put aside your ego and like look at the the bigger picture. But I think in this space in particular, you don't see a lot of that. Um, do, you, do you think that there is an opportunity for people to actually um, grow? I'm sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought with that question, but basically what I'm getting at is that do you see a lot of maturity in this space when it comes to uh, working with these individuals, or do you feel like it's a lot of ego? Like, if you were to put a percentage, would it be like so 90% of it or I, less? I, 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 I kind of see, see what you're saying, because a lot of people, I, I hear this a lot. Uh, we just If we all work together, we can be greater. If we work together, yes. if we did this. And that can be true, but what I've learned is, and I, I'm going to answer the question directly, but you know, indirectly. What I've learned is when you build your own thing mm -hmm. and you become extremely successful, even those your enemies who didn't want to work with you, they will have no choice but to work with you because yeah. now you have a certain level of power, even if they weren't necessarily fans. Mm -hmm. So when people say we just need to work together, we need to work together, that's true. But I believe instead of looking for people to work with you, build up your own house build up your own temple and then all those who were not and didn't want to work with you now they will because i've learned people who refuse to do practice good business principles meaning if you're not doing what's best for the business and you put your self and your ego and your emotions first those are people that are usually failing or going to fail soon yeah. you know what i'm saying all great empires have been ruined because of massive egos and arrogance and you know stupidity so i think uh so my my answer to that is people who refuse to practice good business principles and work with others and do what's best for the business are essentially going to fail but those who make wise choices and do what's best for the business and collaborate when it makes sense usually are going to succeed you know what i'm saying and if you're looking for somebody to work with you to make it better don't build yours up even if you gotta you know build it brick by brick and once that happens They'll all come. What they say, once you build it, they will come. No, I agree with that. And, and you deal with people at your own discretion at that point. Yeah, there, I like uh, there comes a certain time when you do build that foundation. Like you kind of get to pick and choose who you work with. Absolutely. And I think the the flip side to that, where the benefit to that is like you actually get to create the environment you want to see. You know, absolutely. I, I look at that with San Jose. Like San Jose doesn't isn't predominantly known for this entertainment industry, but. Uh, and that's the, the complaints I hear a lot of times. It's like, damn, like, why don't we got this? Why don't we got that? I'm like, well, y'all got to realize, like, we literally got to build it from scratch. Like, we have to be the ones that create the red carpet events. We got to be the ones that bring out the listening parties. We got to be the ones that create these uh, concerts slash festivals. Like, it has to be built from scratch. Um, and you have to start somewhere. Um, and I think that takes uh, going back to ownership and just, like, taking the steps of leading that, pioneering that. Um, and I think... Just kind of like what we were talking about um, in that entertainment industry, not a lot of people are taking initiative and, and kind of leading point. by example because you point. have to uh, lead by demonstration. That's Great something I, I talk about a lot is just because I, I wish there was more shit out here. Um, and I think that's kind of where we're at now. Like we decided, you know what, we're going to do our own music show. We're going to do our own night market um, because San Jose wasn't doing it for the last decade. It wasn't until COVID where I feel like a lot of that kind of gave us an opportunity to do it. Uh, because the red tape was a little bit uh, unlocked uh, in, in on the regulation side. Like, they actually let people do music events in public and stuff like that. Um, and this is where it gets a little complicated. When you start going to that, all that other stuff, like, you realize that it's actually really hard to do it on that level. Because it's one thing to do some guerrilla style, like, to just show up at a park and, like, do an event or mm -hmm. do something like that. It's another thing to be like, all right. What's the process of building this business? What's the permitting process like? Mm -hmm. How do I Permits, get my LLCs? insurance, security, all that safety. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, getting vendors out there, then marketing, getting people to come and care about the event. Very difficult process. All events are a very difficult process. Event planning is a very difficult process, and uh, you know, other people are coming to have fun, but they didn't know yeah. you didn't just put in months and months and weeks and weeks of just work, just trying to get it to this point. You know what I'm saying? And Doing it with uh, little to no help. 
trying. Yeah, no, I agree with that because uh, I, I think the rewarding part of it all is like seeing how people come together. Absolutely, um, and how they create experiences, they create they create memories, and 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 they even connect with people when they start doing their own shit. Absolutely, like, that's probably the the most uh, rewarding thing that I I I feel like I enjoy to see over the last couple of years is like bridging people together. Uh, and then they do some amazing shit and it happens. And I feel like if a lot of people had that mentality, this goes back to the maturity. Like if you're actually able to not count a favor, like, you know, you're, you're bringing, you're bringing someone together and they do some stuff. They don't involve you. That doesn't mean that you're not, you're not a contributing to that success. It's just, Makes sense. you're, you're creating that ecosystem, you know? Makes sense. Um, but to go down the list here, um, I definitely want to kind of highlight some of the stuff that you've actively, you've actively been doing. Which a lot of people are familiar with your uh, your your IG show, the C Lee show. Yeah. Uh, when you do the scissors, you know you cut people off if they ain't, if they ain't ready to go. Uh, and honestly, I remember when you did San Jose, and you was cutting a few people on there. Man, that shit was hilarious, bro. Because I felt like some people needed that awakening. Because it's like you got to understand there's levels to uh to performances and stuff like that. But as far as when you first started it to now, like what uh what is like your favorite thing about doing the show, and like what has what has it done for you as far as like well, that. my personal show that I do at on the Sealy Live page is therapeutic, where I get to just fellowship with the people who've been knowing me for a long time, and they understand me, so we can joke and talk about current events and just unpack a lot of things. That's yeah. my favorite part about my own personal show. We all get to unpack and give our opinion on things and just have real conversations without judgment, and I think a lot of people don't get to do that sometimes I don't even get to do that because I'm so busy working so yeah. sometimes it just feels good to just unpack and laugh and joke and tell personal stories about ourselves yeah. and what's going on in our lives so that's what I like about that sometimes the people don't recognize how important it is to just talk to somebody yeah that in itself can be therapy just unpacking yeah. everything that's on your spirit on your heart that's on you so that's what I like about my personal show as far as my rap shows, what I like the most, I like how it's evolving and how so many people are getting opportunities. I'm talking about record deals, viral moments. We literally even from the live show that I do with Thizzler, we have a no a new show called Bar Wars mm -hmm. that is now an in studio YouTube live show rap tournament. Mm -hmm. That's this is all derived from the live yeah. that I that I started. No, not trying to be arrogant, but I I started it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying and. So I like to see how it evolved and it's created opportunities for even more artists to get seen. People are going viral from these Bar Wars freestyles. People, unknown artists are now getting opportunities to be a part of these ciphers, you know what I'm saying, from this tournament. And it's just creating so many opportunities from such a huge platform. I know uh, not everybody's a fan of Thizzler, but when you start dealing with reality and being honest they've put a lot of people in position yeah. to build their audience so you know i like to deal with truth and the truth of the matter is if an unknown artist who has who's getting 32 views is now going viral on this on this cypher and got a hundred thousand two hundred thousand a million views yep, this is this is results yep. and that's what matters in this yeah. game not emotions results so i like that i was able to like I was able to like do that, yeah. you know what I'm saying, from what I created, and then and it, it's becoming a big thing. So that's my favorite part. Man, no, that's beautiful, man. I I, I agree. Uh, both things, like on the C Lee show, um, giving people, uh, well, giving yourself and the individual to unpack on the like uh, actual discussions, real things that are going on in real life, because like people don't maybe might not have people in proximity that they feel comfortable talking with. Absolutely. Sometimes people got some tough family situations. You can't might not be able to talk to your siblings, but. Maybe your best friend is like the only person you talk to, but they live in another state or another mm -hmm. another situation. Um, and, and from that, and I want to go to the Bar Wars and Thizzler as well, but on that topic of the C. Lee show, like what is something you see common uh, get brought up in those conversations? Like something is you feel like some people are actually venting to you and like talking about real, you know, traumatic experience or you feel like it's more like, you know, lively and more fun shit, you know, people that are actually doing amazing things and y'all just joke about it. Well, it, ju it just depends on the day because somebody might be going through it with, you know, their child's parent. Mm -hmm. They might be dealing with, you know, something in court trying to get custody of that child. So they like, man, I'm stressed out. So other people who've been through it can give yeah, them pointers on that. In. Or I might just have a funny story of something I recently went through in my life, whether it be family or relationship or just something with my health. And they'd be like, Man, I went through. I going through something too. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Is it? This is going on. So that that's the best part right there. When, when you know when you can tell true stories and it's so relatable to other people because they've been through yeah. similar things and we can fellowship and come up with solutions on how to make it better. And you know what I'm yeah. saying? So that that that's dope. Do you think vulnerability uh, at some point in time can be um, like? 
like there's a point where you're too transparent or do you feel like because I, I i think like if you become vulnerable you're being you're being authentic you're being you're being mm-hmm. honest but do you feel like it has that ever backfired at any point in time no nah, vulnerability is strength you know because uh if you tell the truth about yourself can't nobody expose you mm. if i'm completely honest about everything i'm going through can't nobody tell you nothing i ain't already told you already you know what i'm saying yeah. so vulnerability is strength and uh especially in today's time when you on social media um you kind of want to you kind of want to be at a strong point in the generation of clout you don't want to give nothing you don't want to give nobody no ammo yeah. to try to expose you with i told you this already yeah, it's documented you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like it's here i didn't lay it all on the table in generation clout you snatch other people's clout yeah. you know their clout chasing ability when you just completely vulnerable mm-hmm. so and people respect it because so many people you know want to look cool for the internet when you come with a different approach look i'm not trying to be cool i'm just trying to be yeah. me and people can relate to that and people can sense it. They can yeah. feel it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's just being himself. So. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like that with Ye? Like the way he's like vulnerable about certain shit, he just be going in. And- yeah. I think Ye, uh, uh, Ye understands that. His vulnerability became his strength. He's essentially like, look, this is what I'm dealing with. Help me, people. Yeah. And his people flock to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I so fuck with it too. I so that's exactly what Ye does. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, Kim, take my kids out to school. Mm. So he know what he's <laughs> yeah, doing. He hey, you know no. what I'm saying? He know what he's doing. He's no uh, dummy. Yeah. It's just the way that the, the mainstream media now are able to sway shit. It's just crazy how, you know, there's tons of people claiming they hate him. But when I hear he's number one on the charts and everyone buying his $20 products and that, obviously yeah. the results and the impact is still there. Absolutely. Um, no, that's true. I like that. And honestly, that's going to be the, the name of this podcast. Vulnerability is strength. I just named it right now. That's there what it's going to be. Um, but yeah, on the topic of Thizzler and uh, Bar Wars, yes, that is a, an amazing uh, platform. And I, I have heard some of the mixed opinions and uh, conversation around Thizzler, which Absolutely. I'm pretty sure you have. Um, uh, but to your point, though, the impact is prevalent. Like the, the results are there. Um, sure, people can argue about like, oh, this person's whack, but they can afford to pay the slide, whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, the people that do utilize the methods of like going on IG Live and showcasing, like these are ways to get yourself exposure. And if you're serious about an artist, you should be investing into your crap. You should be investing in to getting your pla- uh, your music into a, a bigger audience. Um, so I've I've always acknowledged the the feedback, but I also recognize that their impact is outweighs all the negative stuff. At the end, of the day. I mean, look, when it comes to any platform. You're going to have to, you're going to have to do something. Because if you just check the numbers, I think like 30, 40 million people didn't get one stream at all mm. on Spotify. More millions on YouTube oh, yeah, didn't yeah. get no views. Mm. So it's a lot of artists out here paying $500, $600, $700 for a video and getting their hair cut or their hair braided. And they're investing in this music and studio time and beats and you're not getting no views. Yeah. So look, you ain't got to use no platform, but yeah. you're going to have to do something. Yeah, exactly. You're going to have to do something. So after you get done complaining about every platform and what they post or what they do or don't do, you're going to have to do something. So after you get done complaining, what are you going to do? Because if yeah. you're just going to sit and complain about each and every everybody you know what i'm saying and this person whack okay what are you going to do to get yourself popping are you just yeah. going to be a negative nancy wendy williams complaining ass <laughs> nigga you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying so that's how i look at it man look we we doing good business yeah good business is going where i where i can go to per, you know uh further my brand yeah. i need to go do what i got to do to further my brand and doing good business not dealing with feelings and emotions but that's just me you know a lot yeah. of niggas is emotional and you know <laughs> No lies told. Sensitive. So, you know, God bless him. Um, I, I think that's also, well, first, I definitely want to acknowledge, like, Northern California has gotten so much more acknowledgement because of Thizzler. Like, every time I tune in, because, like, you know, when I tune into hip hop, I'm always tuning into, like, the L.A. platforms and, like, the No Jumpers of the World and all the uh, all those other ones. And Thizzler gets brought up. Even when they talk about, um, you know, hip hop artists that they've discovered, it's because of Thizzler. Um, so I definitely recognize that, you know, you guys are doing more than just Bay Area shit. Like it's, it's the whole West coast. Man, once you get to like an, another a thing I'm going to say to a lot of people in the Bay Area, uh, Northern California, actually in totality, you got to start doing your homework on other areas and you have to leave just, you have to do your homework on like, I'll just, let me get straight to the point. 
Alaska's, New Mexico's, San Diego's. I, I, I meet so the Washington's. I meet so many people from different areas that wish they had a platform. A lot of different places don't Vegas. They have a lot of talent. Yeah. No platform. Hawaii got a lot of talent. No platform. People wish they had a platform. So I'm saying that to say this. Utilize what you have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, because there's some people with nothing. Yeah. They wish they had something. So utilize what you have mm -hmm. and keep flipping. And you keep hustling up yeah. and up and up and up. That's what wise people do. They hustle up. They don't complain up. Yeah. They hustle up. Yeah, and they, they just keep flipping and flipping and flipping. So um, you either you either hustling or you crying. And I'm not no crying ass nigga. You know, I'm hustling. If you're an artist right now, you should have took notes of all the locations because those are the markets you should be tapping into. Man, you got I'm pretty sure there's there's tons of audience that want this shit. Exactly. Um, you know what I'm saying? So no, that's beautiful. Um and uh but yeah, still on the topic of Thizzler, uh you guys got bar wars and I agree. It's a, a amazing, a amazing concept. Uh I definitely think that that lane uh, has definitely been underutilized because I recently went to uh Detroit a few months ago. Um, and I went to I went to do an event to I, was, I went with my uh, this building is operated by a nonprofit. It's called Local Color, um, and they do a lot of great stuff for the community. You know, they they help people get fiscal sponsorship, get grants, um, open spaces like this, make things affordable for underserved people. Um, and they invited us to go on uh, this panel to speak about our project. Um, so I they pay for my flight and everything because I I'm not in the position Baller. to be traveling and everything. You know what I'm saying? So I took advantage of that. Um, the whole event was three days in a row from like nine to five. So, but the only part I really had to be there for was like two hours. So I said, all right, bet I'm going to go do my thing, participate and contribute. And then after that, I'm going to go browse around. I'm going to go tap into the market. I'm going to go door to door. I'm going to go check in with the urban stores. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go see what the scene's like. And man, one thing I really appreciated about Detroit was that, you know, Detroit from its history, it's known as like uh motor city, like all the, the yeah, industry Motown. that boom. Uh, it all left after a certain time. And, you know, my analysis of that was like, damn, this is what Silicon Valley would look like if we fucking lost it all. You know what I'm saying? Like, hypothetically, if everyone left the market, because, you know, there's an influx of people that come from all over the world to Silicon Valley um, for tech and all that. But as you know, some of that stuff has left recently. But it's still here. But what I'm getting at is that even though at, that happened in Detroit, man, the culture took over, bro. Like, it was beautiful to see how the businesses... Um, got more opportunity, like they created more artwork, they created more like music events, more more things that brought um, the culture out. Um, and I thought that was really inspiring because I feel like San Jose is in a point in time where they're rebuilding. Um, and I took that as like inspiration. And when I was walking, I went to one of these clothing stores and I bought this jacket um, from one of the businesses there. And I met the owner, I was just chopping shit with him. I was like, hey man, this is a really dope store. Like I really love the material. Um, and at this point in time, I was thinking like ways like how I can come out here again in the future and do some content. Um, and then he was like, oh, we do something similar because I was showing him the Any Given Bar stuff. And he was like, oh, we do something just like that. And he showed me his platform. It's called On The Field Live. And I was looking at it and it was like, bro, this shit was literally parallel to the stuff uh, that we were doing. And But the difference was that they did it in an outdoor setting um, and they had like a really dope production. The quality was was amazing. And the artists were insane, bro. I'm talking about like, there's like like 50 plus artists all from Detroit. Never heard of any of them. Probably like one or two of them, like the Sada Babies in the world or whatever. But there was some artists in there that were going absolutely stupid. Um, and it made me realize like, damn, like, you know, there's ways to bring these concepts to life in where we live. Um, but it takes like seeking inspiration and like going outside uh, of what you're familiar with to kind of bring that stuff to life. Mm -hmm. um, so when I see what you guys have done with Bar Wars, I realize like this is what it, it looks like. This is what it takes, like creating it and that they will come. Um, and so far, you guys have dropped uh, a few episodes, I believe. Like uh, four. Four episodes. And there's been already a tons of artists because I think you guys do it in a format where you have four artists at a time. Can you explain it for the ones that aren't familiar with Bar Wars? So like how Bar Wars is a uh, Bar Wars is a tournament we do. So we have eight artists compete, and the winner of the tournament is in a cipher, is in a Bar Wars cipher. Mm -hmm. And we got me, D Lo, Frack, and Bulu. We are we are judging, and plus the count, the chat 
is also like a fifth judge. I see. But in between of this tournament, we also go through a, a Bar Wars challenge to see who's going to be on the tournament next. So people submit their freestyles via Instagram or IG Live. And then we also go through our slapper nods when we're reviewing music. And in between there, we still, we, you know, we tell jokes, we crack jokes, yeah, yeah, have a yeah. lot of, have a, have a good time, good conversation. But that's essentially what it is. It's a, it's a tournament. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is a live YouTube tournament. So it's like everything is live. Everything is right there, yeah, right now. Real time. You know what I'm saying? In real time. And it's like uh it's not it's not too many people doing that on that YouTube platform. It's nobody doing it on YouTube on a YouTube platform. Now they got, you know, ciphers and all different kind of freestyles, stuff like that, but an actual live competitive rap tournament on YouTube, nobody's doing it. So we kinda are the first per- people to do that and um it comes with these challenges but it's incredibly entertaining mm-hmm. like it's incredibly entertaining because you seeing hungry artists like yeah. i'm trying to get on because they recognize yeah. like this is an opportunity for me to expand my brand mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and uh and it, it, it's working mm-hmm. out people are really expanding their brand you know what i'm saying and uh it's a good show hell of a show actually oh that's fire yeah the showcase it's it's different when you um you know you highlight a video that you you know, you pre-produce, you know, you have a director, you got a treatment, you got a whole game plan. So it's like your best showcase on a video that's two, three minutes long. But mm-hmm. You actually, can do a hundred takes, but when it's yeah, live, it's, live it's, 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 it's a different ball up, game. Man. It's real time. It's a, you got to be prepared. So it's a different ball game when it's live. Yeah, so, yeah. because yeah, there's a lot of artists to this day that still perform with their lyrics on the music. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is different. It's like, do you got to be, you got to be live. Practice your takes. You got to be ready to go. TTG train to go. Absolutely. Um, no, that's amazing, man. Uh, amazing stuff. Uh, definitely giving art- artists an opportunity to showcase, and and I'm pretty sure there's some new talent that will be discovered on there. I remember I seen a podcast you were talking about how um, on the IG showcases you discovered uh, or you guys were familiar with AB- EBK Young Jock. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. J Bo. J Bo. I'm sorry. Uh, J Bo. And then like just like that platform created that avenue of exposure, and now you know it became what it was. Yeah, yeah, he was kind of already having some motion before then. I learned about him through the IG Live, and I think Thizzler really turned up on him then, too. And then he started doing some business with Thizzler, and then he just took off. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, he, I don't want to make it seem like I'm responsible for his yeah, success yeah. or Thizzler solely responsible for his, his success, but that IG it Live. A role. It played a role. It, it helped. Yeah, it you know helped. what I'm saying? Yeah. It definitely helped. And, you know, Thizzler definitely helped him in the whole EBK movement, and now they are huge. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to J Bo, shout out to the whole EBK, you know, movement they got going on. But yeah, it definitely we it was definitely a contributing factor and yeah, they rich as hell now. <laughs> he said they rich as hell now. That's good. That's a good thing. Um and uh but yeah, I mean, with four uh with four episodes out, I mean I can only imagine months from now what new artists will get exposed. Man, uh Is there anyone that already stood out to you so far? I know from uh, I ain't, this is just from the Bar Wars period. Le- yeah. Little Cito, he he viral again. Cito oh, yeah, is mm-hmm. he did a Bar Wars cipher that's at like four five million. Uh, who else went crazy? Tuda went crazy. The Barbie went crazy. This is just from the ciphers. People are really getting great looks from these ciphers, and they're circulating like crazy, and people reviewing them. So that's just from the Bar Wars cipher. And uh, as far as from the show, we got a, a new artist uh, that I'm excited to see, Task K. Uh, he's pretty tight. We got Lil Amizi from Dago. He's pretty tight. Quincy Scott from Phoenix. He's pretty tight. So, you know, we, we got what? We got Hayward, Phoenix, San Diego, and we got All About a Bag from Oakland. So we just get new hungry artists on, and, you know, they're going to have an opportunity to be on these ciphers so they can get they get they shot to be yeah. seen by more people and, rap you know with some of the top other artists around in northern california so yeah man it, it's it's impactful if you're an artist you definitely should want to try to be involved because it could help you i'm not finna say is you gonna go platinum and yeah, you yeah. gonna you gonna be doing yeah. stadiums you know tomorrow no but it could definitely help you and you have to be honest like artists need to be honest you might think you're the most talented people in the world but does the hard part is making people care does anybody care about how talented you are mm-hmm. If not, you need to be trying to make them care, not complaining and not feeling entitled. Yeah. You need to be trying to use every avenue and platform you can to make people care. Man, entitlement's at an all-time high right now. Yeah, I will definitely. say that shit. Definitely. <laughs> so for the uh, for the artists that do want to get on the show, like how how do they go about that? Like, uh, you can tap into the IG live one. You can tap in with Thizzler directly too. Mm-hmm. 
or and you can submit a Bar Wars challenge. Use the uh, Bar Wars challenge hashtag. Once they release a the beat, there's releasing a the beat every single week. You can jump on that beat. You know what I'm saying? So those are three ways you can get on IG Live, tap in with Dizzler Direct. They contact infos in the bio, or you can do the Bar Wars Challenge. And you know, if you if you win that, then you in a tournament. There we go. Hey, if you're an artist, you already heard the steps. Follow them. Absolutely. Um, I definitely want to uh, spin off a little bit, going back to your uh, media endeavors. And I know uh, we were talking about it off camera a little bit because. You know, man, I see you everywhere, man. You know, I ran into you at Summer Jam, and I was yeah, like, "What's man. good, man?" Tapping in. Uh, I saw that uh, you were on KTVU's "Like It or Not." Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. I, I want to ask Three you times. before we start going into like, you know, what the show's about and everything. But like, how did you even position yourself to get in that? Because that's like a news yeah, broadcast that's TV. station. That's, that's the real that deal. Is, that's the real deal. That's that's another level. That came from a, a good friend of mine named Hannibal Thompson, who's a comedian who had a relationship with KTVU. They reached out with him to him, you know, bringing him on and getting talent on. So we did our first episode in like 2023, like November 2023. And I think the episode may, may have performed well because they invited him back several times and they invited me back a couple more times. Nice. So I'm guessing that, you know, maybe we had a good reaction and it was a good conversation. And uh, yeah, we just we just been doing that and just using it, uh, you know, to further our brands to get seen by a whole different audience because this is coming on at like prime times, yep. eight o'clock and eleven o'clock, right after the news. Yeah. So thousands of people, you know, all across Northern California are watching KTVU Channel Two. This yeah. is like one of the top news networks. So. We, we doing that, you know, just trying to have good conversations and also expand our brands, you know, expand our reach because that's that's super important. Hitting a completely different audience, you know, so it's different when you have 40 plus year old people in the grocery yeah. store. Hey, I seen yeah. you. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? That's Aren't a little bit different on the TV. Yeah, that's on a little two. bit different than a rap audience. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? That I got. So it's like, yeah, that, it, that, 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 that's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal right there. That's like it or not. And it's fun. It's yeah. quick, easy. We go in there, have some good conversations, have some good laughs. It ain't, it ain't too serious. And yeah. it's, it's a it's a good thing. Shout out to KTVU. It's a good thing. It's, no, I, really I think like it was dope, man. I think it needed a brush of fresh share because sometimes they be having some kind of like some you know yeah, especially after weird the news humor. didn't news didn't went off and they yeah. didn't told you oh it was an accident here this happened yeah, yeah. this person got in trouble and all oh, yeah. this so you know it's like, good to have a good yeah. laugh and just exactly. decompress it. Everything ain't got to always be so serious. So shout out yeah. to KTVU for noticing that. Yeah. Just take the edge off. Let people laugh and enjoy life a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, man. Fucking Bippin's at all time high, man. Motherfuckers, is man. Stressed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can talk. It's literally, man. It's a thousand and one Bip stories. Let's let's man, record, laugh. Record break. What's the you you got a Bip story? Like anything that ever happened? To I you got like Bipped that? before Bippin was a big thing. This is when the Niners was playing that candlestick. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I had a CLK 320 Mercedes Benz 1999. Mm. One of my favorite cars. Mm. This was when back when the GPSs, when we had like actual handheld yeah. GPSs, man, I got bipped for that <laughs> oh, shit. The little, little monitor. Yeah, monitor you know what I'm about. saying? I got <laughs> bipped then. And ever since then, I, I try to I try to stay bip free, meaning I man. stay out of bip, high bipping areas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I stay out of high bip. That's the only way to avoid bipping. You got to stay yeah. away from high bipping areas. Don't think you can pray to the bip gods and think you're going to be good. No, they're going to get you. So just don't go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cautionary tales, man. Just don't For the ones go. that aren't familiar, you know what I'm saying? Like, could you educate some people? Like, what are the the BIP areas that we should be avoiding? Oh, uh, any that come to mind from your well, from your you know, all tourist areas in San Francisco, you know, that we call that's the the city is the BIP capital. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So all tourist locations, BIP capital. Um. I'm going to just keep it At this point, there is no, no particular areas. Yeah. Anywhere there's a lot of people at, yeah. anywhere there's a lot of cars, you can get bipped. Yeah. Anywhere. It's inevitable. It ain't even no high areas. No, it used to just be tourist areas. Yeah. That tourists was getting bipped. That's over. Anybody can get bipped now. <laughs> anywhere there's a lot of people, you're getting hit. Man, I don't even leave my shit in the car no more, bro. Like, I, I, because I, I got clear windows. So I, I take everything out. Even in San Jose, like it's happened to me in San Jose. Like I was at Santana Row, me and my girl after work was like, you know, let's get a little quick lunch at Yard House on Santana Row, right on the corner. And I parked in the back and I was like, bet I had worked. Um, I was working in, uh, I was doing tech sales. So they gave me a laptop and my backpack. When I left, I tucked it under the car too. Even before I left, these fools was parking lot pimping, bro. They was easily staying somewhere. They caught me 45 minutes after I came back, my shit was gone. I was so hot, bro. Damn, I when was, this happened? This happened like shit. Like this is after the pandemic. I'll say 2021. 
Yeah, I was livid, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was man. livid. The bip, the bip. Oh, man. But back on subject about the media, man. I, yeah, congratulations with KTVU. That is a big deal um, because, you know, you're elevating the media personality. Uh, not personality, but your your career path with media. Because it could go anywhere from there, too. Man, you got to understand it. And I'm just reflecting because our last interview was 2019. Yeah. It, it's kind of crazy, to, honestly, to go from Instagram Live, talking to your people, just yep. talking shit. Yep. Now, you on TVs. I, I didn't been in a movie. Speaking of Bippin', Burner got a movie coming out called Splash really City. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was in that movie. I shot a scene for that movie. Great cast. Wow. Shout out to Burner. He took yeah. care of us, too. I mean, I'm talking snacks. Mm -hmm. He made sure we was compensated. It was Hell food. Yeah. Burner really did his thing on that. And I really want to, like, say that. Burn. Shout out to Burner and that whole team because that was a great experience and I think we all needed to see oh this is a different level yep. we needed to see them big old movie lights that cost thousands of dollars them hundred thousand dollar camera setups yep. and these cast and crew and they got walkie talkies and they communicating with each other and mm -hmm. they got the hair and makeup and all that going on we I think we needed to see that a lot of us needed to see that to know it's more yep. to life it's yeah. more to this entertainment it's more going on so to go from Instagram Live just talking to now you on T I'm on TV three yeah. times and in a movie is a big deal. And I only say that not to boast, not to brag, but I'm telling you, you don't know where your next opportunity is coming from. So just yeah. do it. Like put your content out, put the work in because you don't know where your next opportunity is going to come from. Just do it. Yeah. No, that's inspiration, man. That's that's genuinely inspiration because, like you said, the podcast to go into the uh, news station to movies. Um, and I wanted to bring that up, too, because that is a very big deal for the Bay Area. Um, because there has been movies filmed in the Bay. Like, there Absolutely. has been some. But I think when it has been come, when it's been produced from someone within the community, that's another level. Absolutely. And, and even uh, going the mile of, like, creating scripts and having some Hollywood actors. Because I've seen videos of, like, other people that, from, that are known came to the Bay to be a part of that film. And I've seen mm -hmm. a bunch of... Uh, there was even uh, got a shout out to uh, DJ Amen from San Jose. He was one of the acts on there as well. Uh, he's like he played a homeboy. I don't know what role exactly he did, but um, I know he was on there as well. Um, and I think that's inspiring because I think it goes back to what we said earlier. Earlier, uh, leading by demonstration. Like we need to see it happen in order for us to follow those steps. Um, but that's amazing, man. Um, yeah, but you kind of took my question because I was gonna be my next things for the Splash City. What was what was probably the the dopest part? Is there anything you can give us about what to expect about the movie? Because obviously we've seen the trailer, you know, but is there anything that's like really dope that maybe we should be like paying I attention mean, to? Don't ask me that because the dopest part was the snacks. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. keep it real. Like yeah. the movie's going to be great. I ain't going to spoil the movie at yeah. all, but just going there and it's just uh, unlimited snacks and breakfast sandwiches yeah. and all that. Like, eat, you know, eat what you want. Like, damn, Burn, you really <laughs> taking care of us. You know what I'm that's saying? Fire. Shout out to Burn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that was, that was tight, but... I'm going to keep it real. The cast was really dope. Everybody yeah. was just hella cool. Yeah. And everybody's there trying to create a, 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 a good movie that's yeah. representative of what's going on. Yeah. Now, some people be like, oh, you shouldn't be promoting that because I've seen, that. I seen well, those yeah. comments. Yeah. People was kind of hating on Burner and, you know, trying to, oh, you shouldn't promote that. But art has always refl reflected reality. life. Yep. And the reality of it is, is bipping is a real thing yep. in Northern California. So somebody from here to make a movie about the reality is not wrong. Your favorite artists do it. It's been going on in every aspect of yeah. life around the world. Art reflects life. So to act like bipping is not happening would be lying. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We can't make no if uh, no movie about, you know, a wife and kids in the Bay yeah. Area. We not on yeah. that really like yeah. that right now. It's, you know, it's a lot going on out here right now. So. Yeah. The art is reflecting life. So, you know, Burner did the right thing and he put a lot of people from the Bay in yeah. there and took good care of them while yeah. doing so. I, me being just one of many. Yeah. So, yeah, we're not, we're going to support this movie wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? We're going to push it like it's our own and uh, we're going to enjoy it. And, you know, shout out to Burner. And we, we can only salute that man for doing that. That was dope. No, that's fire, man. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of clips. Uh, I also seen that he signed uh, two people. Um, that were acting yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. He signed San Quinn's sons. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He signed them. You know what I'm saying? And they were actually in the movie and he signed them to deal because they, they also make music. Burn is giving opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Burn, he, my, y'all got to remember, Burn is a billionaire. Yeah. He was in For, yeah, Forbes. Was Forbes. Cookies yeah. worth, is worth a billion. Yeah. Burn don't got to do none of this. He can literally get high, yeah. 
travel he the good. world and yeah. mind his business. But instead, I want to give opportunities. I want to make art that's going to reflect the culture of what's going on. Yeah. I want to help other, and I'm going to put people in it and take care of them from the bay. When you a billionaire, you don't got to do shit for nobody. And he's doing that simply just to, you know, put people on and that's dope. You know what I'm saying? And if people will complain about certain things, but if you had a billion dollars, you wouldn't do half the shit that man does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to Burn. He's dope. All facts, no fiction. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy you say that, that people are tripping about the, the narrative of the bipping and all that stuff. Because it's, it's like you look at Hollywood, they made movies about tons of traumatic shit that's happened all throughout all the time. our lifetime. Like, like, we got to tell our own story at the end of the day. I'm sure an Epstein movie is coming. You know saying. what I'm saying? Like <laughs> They made they that did, documentary you, shit. Man, <laughs> they wrote that shit out hella fast too. Man, they make, they they art reflects life and that's what they do. It's been going on, it's going to keep going on. So you to complain about it just showing you just not knowledgeable about how this thing works. And if you're not knowledgeable about something, you should probably just be quiet. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you got your opinion about the movie when it come out, you were entitled to have that yeah, but yeah. to say somebody can't make something that's actual reality yeah. is foolish yeah it goes back to yeah. the entitlement you know? you know what i'm saying oh this is really going on but don't make a movie about it don't speak about it don't say nothing yeah. about it you know what i'm saying because i don't you, you i don't want to promote it you don't have to promote bipping yeah. the numbers have shown you ain't got to promote shit at yeah, all bipping is there. here every every uh, new and high numbers so that don't even make sense <laughs> oh you shouldn't promote bipping more kids gonna bip nigga have you seen the numbers <laughs> More yeah. kids is bipping, yeah. and the movie ain't out yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that don't even make sense. Facts. <laughs> no, that's all true. Yeah, I think, it, I, and also go back to just the fact that it was made and produced in the Bay Area from people from the Bay Area, and also, like you said, giving equitable opportunities for people in the community. I think it's better that it was told by people from San Francisco that actually Absolutely. know what the fuck, why they're doing it. Absolutely. Because it's a real story behind all that stuff. And Absolutely. I'm, and I'm pretty sure people all have their assumptions of why crime is crime, but they don't realize inflation and shit going on right now is putting people in situations that they don't want to be in. That's just the reality. Man, I mean, in every, in every part of the country where there's poverty, there's going to be high crime. Yep. In every single solitary corner of the country where there's high poverty, there's going to be high crime. Yeah. When there ain't no money, people are going to commit crime. Whether you white, black, pink, purple, blue, or green, where yeah. there's high poverty, mm -hmm. there is high crime. So I don't know why people will be trying to just like not deal with that fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, avoiding the truth. However you feel about the bipping and all that, I don't like it, but where there's high poverty, there's high crime. Yeah. Period. It's a symptom. It's a symptom of the, the root of the issue. It is. So that's just what that is. Man, that's crazy. I mean, honestly, this just illustrates even further just, like, what the Bay Area is going through right now. Like, we had Keith Lee here for a little bit, and homie left, you know what I'm saying? Like, and everyone made yeah. that a big deal, but they don't realize, like, he's just, showing, he's just telling the story that people in the Bay Area have been talking about. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, with the Keith Lee situation, I didn't like how the Bay tried to lie on that man because we're not liars in the Bay. We like one of the, some of the realest people on the planet. So for one, that they're trying to say like, oh, he only went to Oakland. That was a lie. He went to several different places and it yeah. wasn't just Oakland. Yeah. Then they tried to say, well, he didn't go to the right place. He didn't tap in with the right people. Yeah, yeah. That was also a lie. He yeah. tapped in with the top, you know, f uh, foodie influencers. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, so that was a lie. Then they tried to say, Keith Lee ain't nobody. What? <laughs> yeah, they just this nigga shit. literally is put millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. in in small business mm -hmm. pocket. He can literally take you from zero to hero. Yeah, literally. So he's 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 very he's very important. Don't let your ego get in the way of recognizing who the yeah. fuck this is and what he does. Yeah, because that that would be a lie. So yeah. I just I don't like when we start lying on people, and I know people personally. My, you know, people who had to close their restaurants down and juice bars down simply because they can't sustain like. Because they, they restaurant might be in a high BIP area. Yeah. So it's like they're yeah. losing business because of that. Then the the cost of the overhead yeah, to right have the, the building is too high. So, like, that shit matters when somebody can come in and generate hundreds of thousands, if not millions, for your business. Mm -hmm. This matters. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then a lot of people are not aware of how that politically how things work. Yeah. Meaning small businesses, when they have excess capital, can invest in certain politicians, yeah. like local politicians, yeah. and fund their campaigns, put them in position of power. And then that politician can now get laws passed yeah. or, you know, introduce new things impact. to be able to help and affect the community. So 
that the money small businesses generate matter. Yes. You know what I'm saying? For it sure. matter. It, it definitely matters. But if a motherfucker just selling plates out their car forever yeah. because they can't afford a business or they can't elevate, then it, you know it could be it could be a little tricky. But no disrespect to people selling plates because I think that's the way to go with the yeah, overhead in the bay. Somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the way to go. But the reality of it is, is man, we 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 need help. Mm-hmm. These businesses need help. People think because they see somebody with a business that they're somehow making a whole bunch of money, not yeah. knowing a lot of small businesses are in the red. Yeah, they're breaking even. Barely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's luckily yeah, if you're yeah, breaking yeah. even. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like people need help. They need a lot of help. You know what I'm saying? And people don't recognize that till they shut down. They don't know like 70% of small businesses shut down within the first five years. So, yeah. you know, they don't know how this thing works. So people just talking out of emotion and not you know, research, information, and experience. So, you know. Man, what a time we're living in, man. Motherfuckers just got to read a little bit. Even just, like, man. don't just click the headline. Read the fucking it, article. It, you know it's, important, mean? it's important to be educated because I, I promise you, a fool in his what? A fool in his money will soon part is what the Bible say. I'll, I'll add to that. A fool in his life will soon part. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Being stupid in today's time is very dangerous. It's yeah. too expensive to be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> it costs too much to yeah. weigh. It costs too much to be dumb. So uh, you mentioned something that really stood out to me is just like how, um, you know, how certain like with small businesses, right, they play a big they contribute so much to the community. Right. And these are people that we grew up with. And that's like a big factor because we all go to the Safeways. We go to the Starbucks. You know, we go to the targets of the world. And it's so easy to do that. But they don't realize how how much those transactions mean when you go to the local grocery store and you actually Absolutely. buy from the local mom and pop shop, the small business. Like, um, and, and also on top of that, you also talked about how, like, just being educated with politics and things that are happening in your community. I agree with that. Cause I, I've, I'll be honest, like there was a time period where I was like, I don't give a fuck about politics. That shit don't matter to me. But then as I started to be more entrenched in the community in downtown and seeing how certain things were happening, certain buildings were being made and certain small businesses were being pushed out you start to learn like why those things happen and then you realize like oh shit this person advocated for that you know they advocated for this thing to happen and like it made you realize like maybe it is somewhat important to learn what's going on in your city because everyone pays attention to joe biden sleepy ass and donald trump and everyone hates donald trump because he races all this shit that happens nationally but when it comes to local politics, like that's what actually impacts you and your environment. Absolutely. Your district attorney matters. The people who uh making, you know, rules for the schooling and yep. all that, that that definitely matters because they'll try to like, you know, throw throw 30 kids in a class with yep. this underpaid teacher who can't attend to all your all these kids. And now certain kids aren't being educated properly. So yep. all these things matter when you talk about local politicians. That all is extremely important or just when it comes to your health or homelessness yeah. and you know uh rent you know what i'm saying yeah. rent control and things of that nature that that definitely matters you know what i'm saying so because if a landlord run up this rent go up 500 dollars on your rent when your lease man. up now it's like damn man, that happened to me man that you know what i'm real. saying that like so rent control and things matter where they can be like nah you can't you can go up 50 dollars 100 but you can't just go up three nah. four five hundred on somebody nah. and try to just you know what i'm saying just take them out the game because you train you greedy so yeah they, this matters when you're when you're uh, when you're voting locally and, and i'm pretty sure it's like a broken record for some people they're like oh you know politics matter this isn't that but like for for uh for you like how did you start to care about it like what was the like what did you start consuming well i'm gonna keep it real like my boy carlos from the iug i was just there last week he kind of put really put me on and introduced me to politics and i interviewed the district attorney pamela price of alameda county twice and once before she was elected and uh another time after and he started really educating me about like look this kind of matters and this is how this affects this this affects this and I was just going in there, just doing an interview, just yeah. like, cause he wanted to interview me. And then we start building a relationship and he, and just consistently talking to him and following him and seeing like, Oh, he put me on. So yeah. I shout out to Carlos. He really put me on. So, uh, being who you are and like, I know you don't like the word influence, but you do have influence, right? Like when you start connecting with these people, when do you start realizing that someone is like actually trying to do an equitable, uh, like something equitable for the community versus like just trying to leverage your clout and make them look good. Uh, when they consistent, 
Anthony, you just gotta you gotta listen to the words they say. Mm-hmm. When somebody's trying to just get some attention, they're just looking for any opportunity to try to go viral, or they're just looking for any opportunity to be seen. Yeah. But when somebody's consistently doing the actual work to yeah. make change, or trying to make change, or get something done, then you can see the gen- how genuine they are. Like this isn't a clout; this is his life. Yeah. For example, Carlos, this is his life. You know, what I'm saying going to these board meetings and and interviewing politicians and making sure he's always, you know, educating himself on what's going on and educating me. So you can kind of see like, yeah, he, he, he cares. He definitely cares. This is his thing. So yeah, I, that's how I learned. You can kind of see yeah. through action. Through people, essentially. Like, yeah, you can see, you can see through action who, who just wants some clout and who, who's serious. Just like a rapper. Yeah, you can yeah. see who want to just be famous and who cares about the craft of yeah. rapping. Like, I care about making a genuine song. I genuinely care about my career. Mm. Then it's a, just look at me ass nigga. Hey, I want to be famous. <laughs> hey, I'll do yeah. anything to be seen. I'll do a backflip in a in a diaper off a cliff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll do anything to see. Look at me. So, you know what I'm saying? You see who won't clout and who cares about the craft. No, that I appreciate you uh, sharing that. I just want to bring that up because, like I said, we all live in a city. We all live in a community within the city, uh, and then politics affects our day to day life. And I think some of us should just take a little time, even if it's just a couple minutes of your time, look up some shit related to what's going on in your city, uh, bills, um, certain certain uh, laws that affect people. I mean, like right now, like in San Jose, just to give you an example, like a really prevalent thing happening is like the the vendors, like the vendors that sell at like, are you familiar with Christmas in the park? It's like a big event that happens. It's kind of like Union Square. You know, Union Square, they have like the Christmas tree. And you the, love San Jose. All I'm day, kidding, man. You really love San all Jose. All day, man. All day. Born you and raised. San Jose. So that's like, good. but Christmas in the park, that's like a Union Square. You know what I'm saying? Essentially, like when it gets all popping, everyone comes. It's a big influx of people that come to San Jose during that time period. Um, but there's a lot of event producers that have been doing that for the last 10 plus years. Mm-hmm. Like almost 20 year tradition, essentially. You got to come, by the way. It's lit. It's worth it. Um, but... There's been a lot of vendors that have been selling. And I know those vendors at the end of the day are just trying to make ends meet and they're mm-hmm. and sometimes they're not legal. Um and there was no like I said, there's no knock on it, but now I'm and as an event producer, I hear both sides. Like I'm from the community, so I know that the Hold on, so what's the issue? They trying to charge the the vendors or what? It's just the fact that they're there. Because they don't want the vendors there? Yes. How are people supposed to eat then? Well, hear me out. So as the event producer, right, they spend thousands of dollars to a- activate the space to make it uh, an event, right? A legal activation. But the vendors that they book, like let's just say a Philly cheesesteak vendor that come from like the city or some, he's paying like five racks for two, three weeks to be there. Mm-hmm. And then right across the street, you got a vendor that just showed up and is like, shit. And they're not, you know, permitted. So they're not doing proper protocols to make sure that certain things are like um, safe because, you know, that's why they have a food de- uh, food department at the county because there are cases of people getting, what was it, salmonella or some shit where you eat some shit, it's made on the same dish or something and you get sick and then next thing you know, you're like in the hospital. Like, that's the real thing. What I'm getting at is like, I'm all for helping out small businesses, but I guess there it becomes a challenge where it's like, oh shit, now I work with the people that put the events together and they help me get paid, right? But I also fuck with the community. I know they're just trying to make ends meet. So I catch myself in a weird position. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's beyond me. I'm not the one that's like in charge of any of that stuff. Hold on, so I want clarity. So yeah. it's people like pulling up with like on doing the hot dogs, bacon yeah, wrap hot exactly, dogs. Exactly. But they didn't pay. Then yeah. you have people that pay $5,000 for this space. That's an example. Yeah. So the yeah. event producers yeah. are like, look, Y'all can't be here because y'all didn't pay for this. Yeah. And this is unfair to the people that did pay. Exactly. And the people that did pay, like, look, they didn't pay and they still selling, making a killing. And I paid and I barely broke even. Yeah. I'm not cool with this. Yeah, exactly. Damn. It's a challenge. It's exactly. That's where a conflict That's happens. tough. But the the this is an issue that's like a California thing where they allowed, it's like a bill that passed where allows certain soliciting or something like that. And that's why they're allowed to. Like, the police don't do anything about it. So it's like an issue that's currently happening. But there was, um, but don't get me wrong. Like I said, I love the vendors, but there's hell. I'm talking about like the whole motherfucker. It's like they got ten of the same shit. You know what I mean? It's like so they surrounded the spot. They like, surrounded the whole shit because there's so many people. It's like over ten thousand people every night, kind of thing. It's lit. Now, are are do the people that pay? Do they sell out? Do they do their numbers? Uh, I mean, they probably perform well because it's Christmas in the park. But I can ass- I can I can almost theorize that if there wasn't that in place that they would probably get more business. 
But at the end of the day, this isn't a proof. Because now you got me thinking. If I'm if I'm if I'm just showing up, I'm like, look, they shit nasty. It's not my fault. They shit nasty. Nobody wanted yeah. to buy it. If you was yeah. good, you would have sold all these people. Yeah, yeah. Because essentially, they can like, look, it's so many people here. It's enough for everybody to eat. It's enough yeah. for everybody to make money. Yeah. But if y'all come in 15, 20 deep, yeah. Like, okay, this is excessive. Y'all can't just yeah, yeah. hijack our event that y'all didn't pay for and just take yeah. over the whole thing. And, and just imagine, like, there's a sidewalk where people normally go through. Every sidewalk is basically back to back. Like a vendor, so even even the consumer has to walk through the tents to get around the shit. And I'm, like I said, I'm not speaking down on it at all in any kind of way. What I'm trying to highlight is where being educated of what's going on in in the city and the county and the laws that are taking place. Like it's just good to be aware of it because how can you uh, be the solution to that? And one of the angles, like me as a producer, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to partner with these people and be like, hey, look, let me get a zone. And I'm going to try to talk to people where they can do it within our umbrella as opposed to them doing it on their own. Because now what they're doing is they're just trying to create like uh, they're trying to uh, invest into articles to create a negative narrative about them and like and, and get people to um, to create barriers between them and the event. And it's just creating more conflict as opposed to like, hey, let's like meet halfway and let's figure out a way to get them an opportunity to pay and still participate um, as opposed to just trying to like shun them. That's what I'm. That's my angle, or and, and damn, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, you know I mean, that's just an example I'm giving because damn. there's shit that goes that's on tricky. that affects the small businesses. Yeah, um, that's tricky. Because if I didn't pay my full five thousand dollars for this space, and they free, I'm like shit. Next year, I'm just gonna come set up for free outside. I'm gonna do what <laughs> they did, and that's a real thing. Like, that's exactly what I would have did. Oh, this free all the shit. Hold on, I ain't finna pay this five thousand. I'm finna set up right outside like them, and we're gonna do it this way. So yeah, it's a trick, and there's and there's a lot of other examples that go on in other That's communities crazy. that become tricky like that, from housing to rent control yeah. to uh, unhoused community, whatever the case is, it gets tricky like that. Because even in um, I think in San Francisco, there's something uh, that one of the people that's running for um, I don't know what position it is, but they're trying to propose um, like you can't be you can't have a tent or a, an encampment by a school um, by um, like a, a, a city building facility but that's but what they're gonna do with that is like they're gonna you know destroy those encampments essentially like push them out somewhere else which at the end of the day it doesn't get to the root of the issue like homelessness is caused because rent's too high and there's not a left there's not enough job opportunity um and that solution might not make sense but it's something that's definitely uh happening right now definitely i'm gonna keep it real i don't want a bunch of if i ain't got kids but if i did i don't want a bunch of motherfuckers camped out by my kids school yeah that's out Fuck yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? I love the homeless, but kids first. Yeah, so that's a, I mean, that's a, that's my ideology on everything. Kids, c- kids must be protected first. Yeah, I agree. And I don't want you having no episode around my kid. I don't want my uh uh-uh. uh no kids first always. Kids always first. They are innocent. They deserve safety. They deserve life. They deserve to peace and just go to school and home and learn. Like I'm kids first always. So kids first. No, I agree with that. I think it should always be that way. It's the next generation, you know. They're going to be the ones that absolutely are down our city, our communities, um, and especially with everything going on. This is the last subject I'll go into before we conclude. But definitely, like, I think the thing, and I want your opinion on this, is like everyone is, uh, like, with everything going on with uh, with Donald Trump, like he has to pay three hundred. 65 whatever the number is um Ruling against him yeah yeah and and they're also talking about taking his assets and his uh his equity of his real estate to kind of pay for those fees and it's like a victimless crime or whatever the case is but uh and then you know you got p diddy you know going through his lawsuit and all oh, the yeah, shit he's getting exposed cooked. for and that's just kind of crazy too that's a whole other rabbit hole but like the amount of pressure and uh attention that those things get and everyone's like oh you know what's the next step and then, and it's kind of moving fast you know Donald Trump went from like one of one two impeachments to some other shit but then you got the whole situation with Jeffrey Epstein homeboy got caught like less than 2 years ago and we still haven't figured out who's associated who are the victims like sometimes when i see shit like that i just be like what the fuck is going on like what are our priorities cuz at the end of the day those are kids that are affected by that that mm-hmm. that tragedy you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think there's some weird shit going on with that? Or like you just Well, uh I think people don't care about the Epstein list and everything that's going on because it wasn't no niggas on there. Mm. I'm just gonna keep it real with you. 
Um, the reason why the Diddy story is bigger than the Epstein story simply is because of color. Color definitely matters. The reason why Trump can have all this going against him and damn near, you know, be in prison but still be running for president yeah. is because of color. You know what I'm saying? So he can beat all those allegations and all the sexual assault. He can get past that because he because he's white. Mm. And uh, the reason why Diddy can't is because he's black. Mm. Color matters. You know what I'm saying? And we've seen this over and over and over and over again. Uh, Diddy is in is in deep shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did yeah. he do it? Did he not? It don't even matter yeah. at this point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His ass is in yeah. trouble. Trump, not so much. Trump yeah. can he can come up with 300 something million yeah. he can trump already didn't file for bankruptcy like twice already yeah, you know what yeah. i'm saying so trump goes gonna get around that only thing he's hoping is to not necessarily get in like uh uh like in trouble trouble to where he can't run for president yeah. but if he runs he yeah. might win have yeah, a yeah. good chance at winning yeah, through everything like he's done and yeah. said and the racism and everything simply because he's white yeah. If that was a black man, if that was a Mexican, it would have been over. Yeah. Specifically a black man, no. It would yeah. it would have it would have been ugly. It would have been ugly. So, you know, uh the the complexion for protection is what he has. Mm-hmm. Even Epstein, even in death, he's still necessarily protected and the people on those lists are protected because it's not a bunch of black people. That's crazy. If Diddy was on that damn Epstein list and it was yeah. proof he did it, mm-hmm. that would have been exposed. If it was Eddie Murphy and Wesley Snipes yeah. and all these type of people on that list, mm-hmm. that shit would have been blasted, put all over the place. They'd be in somebody's jail at this point. But because it's not, it's going to get buried and we're going to focus on Diddy and other shit and the next fucking scandal for a black person. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I could definitely, I could see that because even like with... Uh, Joe Biden, bro, like, you know, his son has some, like, allegations of being a Ain't no allegations. I think his son on dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? His son, I think it's, I think it's, it was caught his son is yeah. addicted to dope. Yeah. Another story buried that's not talked about a lot. You know what I'm and saying? they said it's, like, cocaine in the White House, they said. They found cocaine in the, up in there. You know what I'm saying? House, Another shit. story buried. <laughs> Complexion for protection. That's crazy. But it happens. Do you care who uh, ends up getting elected, or do you feel like somebody needs to get elected? Uh, do I care? Or someone specific? No, I don't. I care locally. I care about the local politics. Yeah. As far as the president and all that shit, no, I don't give three fucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just make sure we get some motherfucking money. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Send some uh stimulus packages or, you yeah, know, checks up. You know, send some <laughs> money around this motherfucker. I'm tired of being broke. I'm ready to be rich. <laughs> I'm in my rich era. I need some yeah. money. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm trying to really have it around this motherfucker. So I'm trying to travel some more and do things of that nature. So I need some money. <laughs> I feel that. You yeah, dig? Um, well, uh, well, hey, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you, you know, for coming down to San Jose and uh, being a part of our podcast. And, you know, it's been like three years since we did our last one. I appreciate you. About know, four. Still, about still four. Staying, uh, in connection with us. And, you know, as, as mentioned, um, definitely want to work with you somehow, however way we got to do that this year. I would love to have you at the Culture Night Markets or our Feast Mode event, whether it's hosting or even just come by and just come, just experience it for yourself. Just make but, sure there's uh, some San Jose chicas there. Hey, you know on, what I'm man. saying? Come on, it's San Jose, bro. Well, it's, we got to make sure we focus on the women. We didn't talk about that this podcast. All the ladies in San Jose, pull up to these events. We appreciate you. We want to feed you. We want to show you how beautiful you are. All the beautiful San Jose women, pull up to all the events. I'll be there. Yeah, no, we got a lot of mamacitas out here, man. They're definitely going to uh, see this podcast. They're going to want to explore and learn a little bit about you. Um, so you definitely got to give them your IG so you know exactly where follow to find you. Follow at the Sealy brand. Follow at the Sealy live. Add me on Cash App at the Sealy brand. You can uh, hit me on PayPal, the Sealy brand charity. You know, uh, yeah, all those good things. We can connect, baby. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to see you. No, you got to come. Uh, what's a good event that's like, you know. Where, all of yeah. them. No, I'm Sounds trying to think, beautiful. I'm thinking about the one that's like, that's like, okay, you got to slide because there's a lot of motion. Um well, I just know the night scene, like downtown, it does get really active. Like if you're coming out, like you're gonna see something. I feel like, or someone that you might like. Um, but yeah. Also, uh, this podcast I'm hoping to drop before your upcoming event. Um, but you do have an event coming up in um, in Modesto, California, um, at the Urban College. Yep. Uh, let me tell you all my events. March 16th, I got a mental health event in San Francisco, California, where we're having a just a conversation about mental health. Shout out to Gunnar. Shout out to Chris. Shout out to Niche. So we doing that. March, tw- oh shit, after that, I'm flying out to L.A. We filming Cyphers in L.A. Uh, for Thizzler. So make sure you pull up. If you're in the L.A. area, pull up to that. 
And then March 24th, we got the barber battle, yeah. the grand opening of the uh, Modesto Urban Barber College. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Alejandro. Shout out to the whole Urban Barber College team. That's going to be crazy. Make sure you pull up. That's going to be nuts. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be dope competitive barbers. It's going to be food. It's going to be drinks. It's just going to be a good fellowship and networking with barbers and an educational experience. So that's why I love Urban Barber College because they're going to give you a good time and an educational experience. So you're going to leave with some good game and a good time and a good network. So shout out to Urban Barber College. That's going to be dope. And Modesto, I can't wait to host. It's going to be my second time. Nice. There we go. And March seems like it's really active. Anything in April? Anything to expect a little further out? Uh, I don't know yet. Keep it going. I don't know yet. I know I got more coming. Show. Yeah. More coming. Um, and check out his. Uh, oh, do you know when Splash Shit is gonna drop? You have an uh, idea? Uh, the fall. In the fall. There we go. The fall. Expect. Look out for Sealy in the fall. Um, and more content. Uh, check out his show, the uh, Sealy show, and also on Bar Wars. Everyone do the episode. Tuesday, drop. seven o'clock. Bar Wars. Tune in. You dig? Then we go live Wednesday, seven o'clock on Thizzler. Then we live again nine o'clock on Thursday. And then we live again Sunday at 9 o'clock. See all this shit I'm doing? That's why you should tune in. I'm working. Let's talk about it. Activities, staying active. Once again, I appreciate you for coming down to the Emlyn Labs and coming to San Jose. Um, as I mentioned, this is an entrepreneurship-based podcast. Tons of young uh, viewers that consume on audio and visual. Any advice that you can give to the people uh, that have made it this far into the podcast? Follow C. Lee. That's the <laughs> advice I got. You dig? If you didn't learn nothing from this podcast... Yo ass wasn't listening. So follow C. Lee, you dig, and I'll lead you to the promised land. <laughs> nah, discipline. Discipline, 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 discipline. You heard it. You heard it here. Straight on the Emlyn podcast. It ain't exclusive. It ain't an Emlyn exclusive. Make sure you guys subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, um, and all the above on uh, episodes dropping on Monday at 8 a.m. And we will see you very soon. Thank you guys so much. Out. Peace. <laughs> okay. Yeah, how long is that? Damn. <laughs>